Hello, this is Irena Nereida with Celestial Soul Wellness, and thank you for watching. Today we're talking about the full moon eclipse in Aries, okay? It's happening in 18 degrees Aries, so woohoo, all right? Um, what that means, okay? First of all, let's talk about an eclipse. An eclipse is when, you know, the when we have the full moon, okay? It's eclipsing over and um, the power is going to be about five times the strength of a regular full moon. And this particular um, full moon is even stronger because we just had a perigee moon, which means, remember, we talked about that physically the moon is closer, okay, than um, the rest of the month, than um, it is at other times. So it being physically closer when it was earlier on Sunday, it's still having that power, and then the uh, with the full moon eclipse, so a lot of people are being emotional. Okay, if you have an illuminary, if you're ascendant or you have a planet, a luminary being an asteroid, uh, Chiron, um, your moon, or a planet in Aries. Okay, especially around those degrees of uh, 18 degrees Aries, then you're going to be feeling it. Trust me. Okay, more than ever. Okay, and so you're going to be feeling that pull. So anybody with 13 degrees all the way to uh, 23 uh, degrees um, are going to be a Aries or a cardinal sign. So cardinal signs are going to be Cancer, um, Libra, and Capricorn or fire signs, which is also aside from Aries, you got your Leo and your um, Sagittarius. So uh, those people are going to feel it more. Also, too, the people who have birthdays within uh, five days of either, you know, uh, starting of October 3rd all the way to uh, the 13th, okay, um, they're feeling it stronger than other people. Also, too, around, um, I would say, uh, December, uh, I would say, Dece I'm sorry, not December, January, early January, they're going to be feeling it, the, those born in the first two weeks of January or also those born in the uh, first two weeks of July, okay? Uh, and um, also those who are born within um, the, I would say, first two weeks of, um, of um, April and of August. I do a lot of this on uh, top of my head, okay? So, all right? So besides December, all right? Okay, so we're going to be feeling it. Um, this is also a generational, understand uh, eclipse. Eclipses come in groups and series, all right? This is the Sorrow series of 127, if I'm not mistaken, okay? Yes, uh, series, uh, Sorrow series 127. Now, we had a solar eclipse of a Sorrow series back in 2001 in the summertime. So if you can recall what decisions you made, how you made to um, start the whole new you, it is now coming to a culmination, all right? So what uh, was going on then is now has reached its uh, peak, and you are ready to let go of that. You have done what you needed to, okay? And you have now be, you know, go on to a new phase of your life. Remember, eclipses bring opportunities. It demands changes. A lot of people, especially the big signs of Taurus, Leo, um, Scorpio, and Aquarius, don't like change. They want everything to be exactly the same it is. But then you're not growing. The universe, God is demanding, our divine creator is demanding that we grow constantly, okay? And that we spiritually grow. Remember, it's not financially grow, but that we spiritually grow. Remember, just like he had the king. The king was a page first, then he became a knight, all right? And then from the knight, the prince, then the king, and then, you know, the emperor, and then the retired, okay? And so it everybody has different stages they must pass. And also remember that the eclipse gives us an opportunity to fulfill certain karmic lessons. We have karma and karmic lessons, that's why we're here. Uh, to grow, to always do everything with love and compassion, universal love, unconditional love and compassion through all our changes, okay? And and to see that we are all part of one, not just by ourselves. So um, 
and talking about that, going to the eclipse in Aries, remember a lot of times uh, Aries has the misconception or the shadow side of Aries is that it can be very one-sided, very egotistical, um, reacts without thinking, very rash, thoughtless, okay? Bully, um, goodness, what other ones do we uh, have there? You know, violent, being very desperate, un uh, not grounded, okay? Anxious. Um, creates conflicts when none is needed, all right? Has the need to, to just, mm, because they have all this energy bubbling up in them, okay? But that is not the whole idea of Aries. That is an ungrounded Aries, all right? Or anybody ungrounded. A grounded Aries really is one that knows, okay, that has mental focus because to be a warrior, you have to be mentally balanced because to learn all the strategies, to learn the techniques, to learn how to maneuver the weapons, okay, to learn, you know, uh, to work with your person. Remember, you're only as strong as the person uh, warrior next to you, okay, to learn to work in a team. One must be focused, clarity, mentally, to apply all those things, apply all that information, and it becomes instinctual and intuitional, knowing when, when to move and defend. A warrior is not out to offend. That means they're not starting the problem. They are defending the rights of others, okay, or the victims of when other people have imposed their personal agenda on a group, a person or a group, where it starts harming that person or group, okay. That's when the warrior comes in. Good ideas and examples of Aries warriors would be the idea of King Arthur. Okay, um, we have Gandhi. Yes, Gandhi's a warrior, all right, because he fought in a way. It wasn't physical. He stood down. Okay, we have other warriors uh, such as uh, Malcolm X. Okay, that uh, really pushed you know, for the uh, rights of others, okay? There are many, many other warriors that who are balanced Aries, okay, who show the balance uh, sides of Aries. Then we have others that are just all about themselves, you know, negative, and, and Hitler was an Aries, but he showed the shadow side. Genghis Khan, okay, all right? We have um, other ones, too, that it's all about themselves, you know, uh, Francisco, uh, was it uh, Franco, the one who ruled with the iron hand uh, over there in uh, Spain, all right? So uh, always remember that balanced Aries is always doing everything compassionately, understanding his duty, his loyalty is not just in himself, but to uplift and protect the public, which is very important right now. Because um, I'm going to kind of slide into planetary um, aspects at this time. is because as uh, the warrior uh, being, all right, we have, the, we have the moon. And it's when we have a full moon or a full moon eclipse, it's opposite the sun. The sun is in Libra right now. It's demanding harmony, beauty, creativity, okay? The Aries says, woohoo, wait up. Let's see, something is not right here. And on top of that, it's being conjunct by Uranus. Okay, Uranus is right there next to that Aries moon saying, I got your bag, boat. I got it. In fact, he might be like Mercurial with Romeo. Okay, he's instigating it. Okay, so which means we need to be careful with anything with metal, um, sharp uh, items. So those of you who cut hair, be careful with curling irons and scissors and razors. Um, or yourself, if you'd like to do your hair a lot. Uh, when you're cooking, be careful with knives, all right? Um, or tongs if they're hot, anything with metal. If you're working, uh, you know, with big machinery, be careful. Take your time. Focus. If you're sewing machine, even that little needle, it's metal, okay? If... Um, you know, you're, uh, let's see here, just by walking, be careful of metal around you, all right? 
because you could just walk right into something without paying attention, you know, maybe nails going to the tires, okay? So this is not the time to get any piercing done, especially with Mercury retrograde, okay? Um, remember full moons where the moon eclipse brings blood uh, to the surface of the body. If you do decide you're doing a retouch up on a tattoo or a, a piercing, which is fine for retouches and all that, um, those of you who do tattoos and all that, this is before Mercury retrograde. This is time you need to advertise for retouches and all that. You know, have your clients so you drink a lot of water because the more water, then it's that the uh, oxygen goes in and doesn't need to bring the blood to the surface for heavy bleeding. Okay, so in case two, if there's a lot of bleeding, eat a lot of spinach or iron is necessary. Okay, because this is the time that people become vertigo, especially with Uranus there. All right, dizziness, um, panic attacks, heavy trouble breathing, all right, because when the solar plexus is not balanced, it's putting pressure all up on top, and that's when you see the un, an unbalanced Aries, usually is someone who's walking like this, and they got their gut all pushed up there, you know, because they're unbalanced, they're carrying rage and anger and resentment there. And remember, anytime we're carrying rage, resentment, anger, how does this go with planetary aspects? Is because Pluto right now is squaring um, the sun, which is conjunct Venus. So I'll go more with that conjunction in a little bit. But Pluto squaring all that is bringing up those psychological issues, saying, take notice. Look what's going on. This is not right. It is having conflicts within ourselves and realizing we cannot continue this anymore. Okay, so going back now, taking that idea with that Aries uh, full moon is remember, you know, uh, a lot of people right there say, oh, okay, I need to go take a fight and tell someone off. No, 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 no. Because a true warrior understands that it has its unique talents and that it has to work in a team. Okay, with maybe when we're on a ship, everybody has their unique talents and gifts and um work that they do, but bringing it all together creates the mobility of that ship. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. All right, and so it is unnecessary. We are all special, so before you go do that fight and put down someone else and offend or harm someone else, remember that someone else, too, is just as special, has a thumb. That thumbprint means we're unique, no one else, and all the centuries and centuries and living of it has our unique thumbprint. Okay, could be similar, but it is not exactly the same. So if you ever think, you know, you're not worthy of love or self-worth, look at this. This says, this is God's way of reminding us, just like our iris, okay? No one else has it. And um, that's what makes it so wonderfully great. Because as an Aries, putting our unique talents, working with someone else's unique talents, we create a hand, a group that actually functions even better. You can only do so much with a thumb, right? All those people with taxi, you know? But we can actually, when we're doing all our fingers, using all our fingers, okay, we get more done and faster. Okay, so that is what's important. That's what Pluto is doing, being squared, um, Venus and... Um, the sun, Venus conjunct the sun, it's all about love, oh, woohoo, this is fun, it's creativity, beauty, look at me, by chance you probably see that I don't have any makeup on, it's okay, because I have been challenged, typical um, Aries moon, right, they wanted to see what I look like without any makeup, I usually don't wear makeup anyway on a daily basis, so it was no problem to me, I usually just uh, wear eyeliner, mascara to bring out the eyes, just so I don't look so dull, so if you notice something different about me, yes, I have absolutely no makeup. This is me, my natural form, see? Okay, and I'm wonderfully proud of it, and I'm a confident person. I'm a woman in her 40s, so I am just, I don't mind. And I talk about this, especially that challenge, because to being in the eclipse full moon, I am a veteran. I can tell you with my own experience of working together, seeing those guys when I was in the Navy, and I would see those guys with the SEAL team work together, and the guys in the EOD, okay, that band of brothers just putting in all their influences and their wonderful, unique talents and working together and laying themselves 
out there for someone else. Okay, it's just unfortunate that the political idea that was going on wasn't exactly, you know, the one most um, sincere uh, upon the uh, parts of the politicians. But how wonderful that those guys just ready up there and ready to be there. And that is what is being a warrior, a balanced Aries is all about, okay? Is um, really that mental focus because it helps us to learn more. Aries can learn. We all think it's about brute, brute, you know, all bronze, no brains. But you need brains to be able to use the brawn. Okay, if you're just working out, you're not using your brawn. You're just building the brawn and maintaining it. But to use it so that way it works to your advantage, then it's using the brain also, okay? And that is showing um, the importance. So we forget that uh, our crown chakra, our head, is just as important in this and not just our solar chakra, all right? And opening ourselves up to that. Um, Okay, uh, another thing to realize is um, when we are we are uh, balanced, we are adapting and we are we are being there for others. Okay, and knowing and being aware of what's going on. As a warrior, you don't just go. You have to know when to apply certain strategies. Okay, when to use cer certain maneuvers and certain armory and weapons. Okay, uh, for that'll benefit that battle or that situation, all right? One of the wonderful most, uh, William Wallace is a great idea of a warrior, okay? I mean, uh, you guys all remember Braveheart. He got further with that little rock than he did with the big one, and everybody thinks big is better, and that's the problem here in the United States and what's going on. We need to not necessarily battle physically, but more or less like Gandhi, look at what's going on with our health system. You know, it's very unfortunate, but it is. Um, and that's uh, why is that important? Because Libra is about health. Also, a lot of people give all that um, wonderful ideas to Virgo. But um, Virgo has the extreme ideas of health. But Libras like to maintain it because of the beauty. So they know to get maintain the beauty on the outside. One has to do it from the inside, okay? It has to create it and balance it. It's always maintaining and being balanced and keeping those adrenals balanced. Because if you're always on the, on the shadow side of Aries, you know, you're creating um, adrenal fatigue that's in your kidneys, and then the, which is affecting your thyroid, okay, and your thalamus and your hypothalamus. And that's why, you know, certain people, you can see it that they got, you know, their throat chakras all messed up because of their adrenals also. All right, but a balance, we are grounded, okay? So we'll talk about meditation, how to ground ourselves later. I was just about to go there, but let's continue with planetary aspects. At this time, too, we have um, Uranus that's uh, opposite of Venus, so unexpected things can be happening in the ideas of romance, all right? And it's really conflicting. We are letting go of what is no um, longer uh, necessary for us. And um, relieving, we are growing. Remember we said that the beginning of this hour series of the Eclipse of Solar 1 happened in uh, the June, July of 2001, okay? So we have come about in 14 years, all right? Which those of you who uh, really think about it, in 14 and a half years, is um, the half term of, of Saturn, okay? So um, Saturn has gone through half of uh, the... Oh, the zodiac at that time, you know, and so we see those changes and realizing, okay, we did that phase. What is the new one? We're closing it because next comes in two weeks the solar eclipse for new opportunities and beginnings. You don't want to let go of that. You're gonna have to. This is not the time to sink or uh, or swim. This is the time to sink or float, float and see the opportunities that are coming your way. And that is the gift that God is giving. It is a gift when we have eclipse and things are ending. Okay, we might not like it. It might feel hurt because we got so used to it and made us feel good. But there's more to come. And we get to grow even more. All right? All in his image. And that is, you know, wonderful of the divine creator to offer that. Remember, that is why we're here. 
draw here to grow compassionately, unconditional loving in this uh, process and to fulfill certain karma debts, okay? So, moving along there, we have uh, Mercury, we know, is retrograded. What retrograde Friday? I was going to do a video on that, and then things happen, you know. My goodness. So, and I am happy for it, uh, but I'm going to talk about Mercury retrograde right now real quickly. Let me write that down for you guys, okay? So, in Mercury retrograde there, Remember, it started in Scorpio, and now it's moving into Libra. So a lot of us have received phone calls, texts, letters, yes, uh, telepathy messages from our Scorpio friends that we haven't seen in a while, and our Libra friends, okay, or water and uh, air sign friends. And that is quite all right, you know. Does not mean you necessarily have to get together with them? No, or it's understanding and readjusting your relationship with them, okay? This is not the time to start new contracts. This is time to revise situations and agreements that you're in. Back up your computers, okay? Go ahead, refinance. Don't finance for the first time. Leave him agreed. Do not get married at this time, but you can renew your vows, all right? This is also a good time to be in um, a Mercury retrograde. It affects a lot of Virgos and Geminis, okay? More so, especially uh, last week when we had the storm. You know, everything is going all over the place. So, understand that we have uh, Mercury's retrograde until the 25th of October, and then we have the storm again. So you need to stay really balanced. Those of you Mercury and Vir I mean um, Virgos and Gemini, so have uh, major luminaries in uh, Gemini and Virgo. Okay, stay truly balanced with all that. Going back with Mercury retrograde, though, um, this is time to really open up, especially since when it goes into Libra, the social consciousness, and seeing what is there, you know, um, balancing out that uh, the eclipse, the full moon eclipse, all right? Um, let's continue there. Is, um, we talked about um, already Venus uh, conjunct um, and the moon. It's, you know, a lot of love, the necessity, what is love? what people are willing to do, okay, people consider they need to sacrifice for love, and that's not necessarily true, because Libra is all about balance, being just and fair, <coughs> excuse me, so, for being just and fair, we don't need to sacrifice or give up part of ourselves, yet a, the shadow side of Libra is people do that, they lie, they manipulate. How do they lie and manipulate? They say that there's something that they're not. For example, I was watching the other day, Meet Joe Black in the beginning when the girl meets um, Brad Pitt in the coffee shop, you know. He says something to her, and she goes, oh, yes. And he goes, oh, really? So he asks a follow-up question. And she looks at him, and she goes, I actually don't know. I was just being agreeable. That's manipulation because you're lying. You're saying you understand something, and you don't, all right? And that's very important because it's considered passive manipulation. And we are lying. It's called false advertisement of who we are. If we really don't mind, then don't mind. But if you do, well, then speak up. You need to say who you are in these incidents because people want fairness. We want to get to know someone, all right? We want to be able to know how to love you and offer you love. But if we can't, if the other person is lying to us and manipulating and then here, you know, I think you're a plant and I'm giving you water and plant food just to find out you're a cat who needs cat food. Okay? You know, but hey, if you were honest from the beginning, then I could have given you the, you know, maybe offer you the love if I, if I have that kind of love to give. All right? Okay. Another thing to be aware of, we already talked about um, uh, moon conjunct Uranus, is Mars is squared Chiron. And so this is very wonderful because even though it brings up uh, difficulties and all that, it's giving us a chance to heal, to ground ourselves. Mars being in, um, in uh, Sagittarius, it's a mutable sign. So it's not being so haphazard, but it's willing to take a step back and go, oh, wait, I see. I needed to do it this way and re refine itself, okay? And that's a good thing. So, um, you know, Breathing deeply, remember correct breathing, I'll do it again in the health section of this, but a lot of people breathe 
and they take deep breaths into their chest, and that's not good because they're hyperventilating, and you actually feel like you're going to topple over. Correct breathing is when we breathe in through our nose, filling our abdominal region, not our chest, our abdominal region. Holding it for five, four, three, two, one. Release. <laughs> Exhausted. Depress it completely. That's the way we release some toxins from our body. We should do 10 full breaths like that every hour to get the optimal, optimal, the best amount of oxygen into our system, into our blood, to circulate, to help us think, okay, and stay grounded. All right, so um, another one is, too, that we have mercury retrograde is trying Neptune. So uh, be careful on communication. A lot of things that we're hearing is sounding very poetic and wonderful, and it's great, but it's not necessarily clear, okay? And this is a time we need to be careful of our balance, because Neptune is all about flow, all right? Dancing, move, feeling it, okay? And um, Mercury is about going fast, and it can't move within the flow. It's like it wants to take a to B, but it realizes it has to go with the current, okay? And so there's certain frustrations there, but since it's trying, it's going to now at this time move with it. So a lot of stuff we're hearing from people, I mean, this is a very passionate, loving time because we're hearing what we need to hear from others um, or what we would like to hear from others, not necessarily what is best, okay? But then we're going to start assuming a contract or an idea or base something at this time, which is not good, just enjoy it, listen to it as if it were music to your ears, okay? And Juno is square Mercury retrograde. Again, this is a time to really be um, understand communications of what we need. The breakdowns are happening in our daily life, okay? And we're not expressing what we really need in our hearth in, or within ourselves, okay? And so people cannot give to us. If I say I'm thirsty and I'm saying, oh, I, I need something, and they offer me cake, and I'm like, no. Okay, well, I said something. I wasn't clear. Then, you know, hey, too bad, so sad, you know. It's time to be very clear about that. Our relationship with ourselves is, is very important, too, because, um, you know, Juno is um, trying best us, so we're going to feel faded things at this time. And it's going to be like, wow, oh my goodness, I didn't expect that. But um, it's good. It needs the change. Remember, this is a very good time changing. If we're not sure, go back to 1996, okay? We had the eclipse back then, I think, also. And um, remember what happened in 1996 and take those ideas. Uh, for example, I moved out uh, at that time. And um, from my parents' home, and I did again this year. Yay, you know. Um, so, you know, uh, if you see how things pass, certain people pass away. My grandmother passed away. My grand aunt, you know, passed away also this year. So, you know, you see certain things of what's going on, all right? And um, we maneuver ourselves to different uh, accordingly. And hopefully we learn those lessons. So that way we don't have to repeat those lessons, okay? Um, let's see here. We talked about, uh, my goodness, I think we did all those planetary aspects, didn't we? What did I uh, miss aside from, uh, let me just look here real quickly. Okay, was, uh, Saturn is still in Scorpio. So there is a um, uh, opposition there with uh, Lilith. And so we are still seeing a little bit of people trying to manipulate a situation for their own benefit. That's going to really, it's not good if one is attempting to do that because it's going to go into your reproductive system and into your abdominal region because you're not being clear, you're not being honest. And remember, emotions, we do feel the guilt and we know it starts setting in our body. Every disease, every physical um, malady, starts within an emotion that has been expanded. Why is something hereditary? It's not necessarily physically hereditary. It's because that belief system has been passed on, passed on, passed on. Okay? So, um, and those children are believing the same thing, and then things happen accordingly, you know? 
let's see here anything else we do have uh, Chiron uh, sextile to Pluto so it's very good this time of psychological gunk coming out and healing so that's all wonderful um, am I missing anything no uh, we're pretty good so let's move on okay and um, let's go to the Sabian symbol the Sabian symbol excuse me <laughs> all right brownies dancing in the setting sun to relax and enjoy after a long day's labor of what is done while we sleep okay and just letting it go all right and just know that we deserve brownies being uniform personnel also okay there we got the words in a sense reward they are there to protect themselves remember a warrior is not out to harm you know though it can't hurt but it's not out to harm okay um, so it's very important that after we we have done the job of the day to sit back relax enjoy the fruits of it after all you know we have Oktoberfest going on yay for Germans okay um, especially southern Germany I just to clear up a misconception not all of Germany celebrates Oktoberfest okay it's only in southern Germany mostly um, and in areas here in the United States okay just to make that clear for all of you people right and it was a uh, marriage reception okay that lasted a couple of weeks long so <laughs> and it was very opportune because you have the spate laser okay the spate laser vine um, is the grapes that you pick spate being later okay um, uh, so you picked it after um, the the picking the regular harvesting so they even got more plumped and more sugary all right at this time and so that's why you have the uh, that kind of wine is uh, sweeter all right even though it's white okay so enough of that for your history and culture the the foreign language teacher in me came out <laughs> some of my students are probably saying oh my god she did a career change. Oh, I can't get the teacher out of her. All right, so it's moving right along. We did the Sabian. So let's do the personal forecast, okay? And the personal forecast. Um, so Aries, it's all about your appearance, how you're coming out, how you're presenting yourself, all right? And um, how you're seeing things, uh, how people are seeing you better yet. You think that people are seeing you one way. You are just shedding yourself okay you're reinventing yourself and that is wonderful and good and necessary it's giving you that opportunity and it was coming and you're just happy about it you know come see me for energy clearing so we can boost that up all right get your body booster there and get things moving all right next we got uh, Taurus that's in your 12th house it's time to meditate to really see within yourself how do you want things to change for you? You have gone through several eclipses as it is, and now how are you applying it? Did they work to your best, okay? How can you use those eclipses that you had uh, encountered for the past two and a half years, you know, to continue working for your best? Think about what has happened in 2001 and in 1996 if you were born, okay? I know I have some uh, uh, young viewers, yay! You know, but I do have some more um, veteran viewers also, woohoo, you know, that can go back to 1996. Uh, and those of you who even want to go further back, 78. Okay, ah, uh, yes. Okay, so uh, what happened at those times? Think about it, you know. And so, um, I was like, 96? Wait, yeah. Okay, 78, did I do that right? <laughs> Okay, so, um, you know, think about that. Uh, this time to heal and to go and heal others also, Taurus. Work with them. Go to different places and offer that unconditional love. You have beautiful, warm energy. Let go of any stubbornness or being stuck in a certain area. And allow yourself to grow and allow yourself to be shine within everybody, okay, to see all that. Um, let's continue here. we got Gemini. In the 11th house, it's all about your friends. You're readjusting the ideas, uh, uh, 
what kind of friends you need in your life or how you maneuver yourself within your different circles of friends, okay? And um, your things, what are your goals? What are those things that's very important? And um, you're really helping to move along. And this eclipse is just going to push you in that direction. You want change. You love change. You know you like it. And so you are hoping that this eclipse is coming pretty soon to do all that. And you're just thrilled, Peach, about it, you know. So more power to you. Cancer, this is happening in your 10th house, okay? And so it's about career. You know, changes are happening within your career. And um, how you deal with authority figures, even perhaps a father figure, even a mother figure if she was a single parent. And how you are disrobing the need of their approval, okay? You are becoming independent within them that their approval is no longer necessary. Their uh, love isn't. You are providing because of all that self-love you have within yourself. You are now the authority figure giving that unconditional love of being the parent, all right, and offering that and being the, the supervisor in your career, the leader. You are now the leader and people are following you and how to do certain things. So be sure you are kind, compassionate. You know, this is in a case that I say, what would Gandhi do? What would Jesus do, okay, if you're not ever sure? And, um, you know, more power to you always. We're going to do a meditation of power later. So join us, Cancer. Okay, after Cancer Leo, you're getting the chance to really expand your universe, okay? Or if you have been expanding, you're coming back home, you know? So, you know, you're, you've been dealing with other cultures, different ideas, being so far away, and you're now coming closer. You're focusing and who you are, bringing in all those philosophies and ideas into you and seeing how can they expand in you. Take a motorcycle trip by yourself. Really see the world how, they, how it is. Breathe in fresh air. Teach a class. If you know foreign language, teach a, a, a foreign cooking class, you know. Foreign music, you know. Maybe uh, do a rap song in another language, Leo, all right? Expand. All right, expansion, expansion, expansion. Take a philosophy class. Learn about, like we say in Spanish, the Masaya. Okay, the esoteric world. Virgo, this is about reinventing yourself, transformation, okay? So you have dealt with all that gunk inside of you. Why do I say that? Because you're the hypochondriac sometimes, and I know that's just the shadow side of you because there are Virgo say, I'm never sick, I'm always good. And more power to you, and I'm proud of you. But let go of all those feelings of self and worth that you're holding. You are in harming yourself, first of all, not hurting yourself. You're harming yourself. Okay, first of all, putting high expectations on other people that you yourself can follow. How do I know that you yourself cannot follow? Because you're here on this earth. All of us are imperfect, or wonderfully, perfectly imperfect, okay? Let it go. Drop it. Just don't drop it, okay? Now, dropping those expectations on parents, on our family members, okay, on authority figures and any one of our loved ones, then we no longer have to have resentment, okay? Because if we are in control of ourselves and we are grounded and we are balanced, we no longer need to then rely on other people to because we know how to react in no matter what situation. The more grounded you are, you turn into Mr. and Mrs. Smith. You remember with Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt? It doesn't matter what happens. You are totally aware, and you can maneuver accordingly. Okay? And that is good. So, and that is then you're perfecting yourself. So this is time to transform that. Ideas of death may be coming around. So this is in your eighth house. Oh, don't worry. We're all going to die. It's not about death. It's about how you're living. How are you creating your life? And how are you supporting others to create their life? Also, too, in the eighth house, you might get opportunities of uh, widening your finances, okay? Either because you're going into a contract agreement, hopefully it's refinancing, not a new one, or you're paying off, okay? But either way, your, your finances are seeming to expand a little because of either paying off or getting new from someone else, you know? And um, which helps you deal with your moral issues of expansion and understanding 
who you really are and what's going on, and it's all okay. And this way, we let go the need to judge others and to judge ourselves, all right? As long as we're being good and being compassionate, that's what's very important, Virgo. Libra. Libra, this is all about your partnerships. It could be marriage partnerships, your um, uh, loved ones, uh, business partnerships, even enemies. You are putting fine touches on things, okay, and understanding. And maybe you are letting it uh, fizzle away because you have now come into your own. Fourteen years ago, you had decided you had certain needs in your life, and now those needs have been fulfilled build, accomplish, or no longer need it, you know, because you have changed. And sometimes what happens, too, is because of that, our partners change because we are in a different phase of our life and moving into a different direction, all right? And um, if a partner is not going to uh, no longer, you know, support our agenda, that is fine. They have that right. You go, no, but hey, they said they're going to love me forever. you got to love yourself forever no matter what phase you're going through, and not expect other people, okay? Because what love is, is different to many other people. Remember the five different uh, love languages, um, which one is yours, and um, what is your need, do you, and are you using those love languages within yourself, for yourself, remember? we got to love ourselves more than anything else. You know, I'm my belly dancing coach, she always says, Give yourself a hug and a kiss for self-love. And I believe, and I think that is an awesome idea. Okay, so Libra, you're not feeling good. You're feeling in love with yourself. All right, I give you a lot of love to you. Okay, Libra? All right, let's move right along. We got our Scorpio in the sixth house. It's all about your health, okay? You need to take control. Scorpio, you have been going through so much, okay? It has, um, no lie, really. You've been going through so, so much. Uh, with Saturn in um, your sign, you've gone through so many experiences, perhaps physical aches, pains, it's all coming to a uh, head, and um, things dealing with your families, and issues, and children, and parents, and work, and you just have felt that your life has been going kaput, like we say in German, repeat after me, kaput, but the nice thing about kaput, if you see, take the English, you have the word put, and putting things in its place where it needs to be, okay? Because it was all chaotic before, believe it or not. So with this eclipse, you're really, really getting the chance to take a look at what's going on in your health. Saturn has played wonders, okay? And all that emotion building up has been here, 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 all over, okay? And now you're getting the chance to say, what can I do? Take some time out. Breathe. Remember the Merkabah breathing? Breathe in for five, hold for five, and release. And we're taking breathing in through our nose, filling our abdominal region, not our chest, okay? And then depre uh, depressing it and releasing it all, okay, from our tummies, all right? And get yourself grounded. Are you taking your magnesium? Magnesium really helps us absorb the other vitamins and minerals. It's the number one mineral. A lot of doctors forget to mention that, okay? That's why you see magnesium with calcium a lot, okay? Remember, calcium citrate is easier to absorb than carbonate, especially if you're a female Scorpio, uh, Scorpio okay? Probably, uh, probably ideas that your reproductive system have come up. You know, if you have endometriosis or uh, fibroids or fibromyalgia and all that, you know, you really need to be taking in more vitamins, more magnesium, more calcium, okay, pantothenic acid, all right, to clear out those metal toxins. Stop eating all those uh, processed foods, anything pre-made, start uh, cooking from scratch. If you're a single father, Scorpio, it's time to cook. I'm too tired to cook. Crock pot. Trust me, crock pot. Call me. I'll help you. I'm a nutritionist. I'll give you some uh, great ideas. Okay. Talking about that, did I put the food in the crock pot? Okay. So now um, also this time, Scorpio, of uh, those who you work with, your pets, also be concerned, be aware of what's going on. All right. You're having changes in the structures of all that, and it's necessary. Go take a walk. Go swimming. Go into a hot tub and relax. Okay. A lot of you don't know how to relax. 
all right? Sex is not relaxing. It helps. It adjusts. But it's not total relaxation, okay? But sex is good. It's good for your health. But again, it's not complete relaxation. Let's continue. Scorpio after Scorpio, we have um, Sagittarius. Okay, Sagittarius, go. You know, have fun. This is all in your sector, fifth house of, of children, romance, music, entertainment. Go, take a dance class, tango it up, okay? Um, go listen to some music, all right? Hang out with your kids, no matter how old they are. Um, hang out with kids, other people's children. Go have fun, laugh. When was the last time you laughed hysterically? Go to a comedy club, okay? Dance it up. Enjoy, let it go, let your hair down, okay? Um, you know, and just enjoy, just ah, breathe into this. It's good, you need it, okay? This eclipse is really helping you, all right? So um, uh, it trines you, and it's very good. So let all that go. Um, after Sagittarius, we have Capricorn. This is happening in your fourth house of um, you, of your hearth within you, and your actual physical home, and issues dealing with your mother, okay, or any other female authority figure, that feminine figure that you have considered, okay, and so, um, you know, restructuring that, you might feel that you're expanding a little, maybe people are leaving your home, but it's, be, and that's giving you a chance to expand, or you're creating your home, okay, or you're uh, expanding the people who are you living with. Okay, but one way or another, you're getting the opportunity to expand. And that is wonderful, okay? And this is time to think what was going on in 2001 and how you want to restructure who you are, the basis of who you are now, because 14 years later, you know, 13, 14 years later, are those ideas still serving you? Are they really um, working to your benefit? Or maybe you can change it now. Maybe you are no longer the woman or man at that time. And um, you can see that, you know, and readjust everything. So um, let's go to uh, Aquarius. This is your third house of communication, the neighborhood, your siblings, all right, cousins. So maybe you're taking a class, you're finishing a class in the community, all right, or you can... Um, renew, rekindle relationships with cousins, okay, or siblings, and or you're readjusting the ones that you have. It's time to take a look, go for a walk, and see what's all around you. You love uh, saying hi to people and all that, just as much as you like having your time alone, and um, which is wonderful. So um, this is an opportunity to be able to teach and really see uh, and, and share with others which you know if you haven't already started teaching something, okay? So um, this is time to be very clear. You like to pride yourself in being very logical, but uh, let me tell you something, Aquarius. And I have an Aquarius moon, so once again, no offense to be taken. But a lot of times Aquarius like to say, oh yeah, I'm logical. I don't like to I'm very rational, listen to my words. But really... <clears throat> Like they say, is that language was created to hide the true emotions for fear of being judged, okay, and criticized. So remember what you're saying. It can be seen through it by other people, all right? What's really logical, okay, to do is taking a look at your own emotions, why you feel that way. And if it's out of fear, and not of compassion or love, then you know you're not being logical. And say, okay, and deal with that within yourself better before communicating with others, because people can see through it. You know, they can. And we like to think they don't, but they can. All right, so moving right along, Pisces, this is into your personal finances and your house of morality. You are expanding. You're not criticizing as much. You know, there's no need to expectations are being dropped uh, from other people, okay, and from yourself, who are you, what is it needed, you know, um, look back at what was going on in 2001, and 
how you decided to create yourself and now you're letting it go um, also your personal finances are changing all right maybe uh, you're dropping that part-time job because they gave you a raise at your full-time job or you got a second part-time job and you're dropping that full-time job because you really didn't like it and one of your part-time jobs is actually part of your soul purpose and soul yearning okay so you know all these different opportunities be free to let go of the need to rely so much on financial situations there's wonderful opportunities you know financially to to downgrade our lifestyle and still be fulfilling all right so also um you know put yourself out there and be more aware of giving and uh your self-worth and asking people to pay for what you are worth okay when you offer offer and give and give but you're not getting anything in return you know people actually like to pay you know they it's unfortunate we like to think that people automatically appreciate one another but they don't okay um some do you know I would say 50% of society, okay, maybe less, but hopefully that's me, uh, that's my Venus and Virgo wishing, okay, that it was more, all right, but um, being idealistic in the Jupiter and Libra, but um, my Jupiter and Libra, I'm saying, it, it's just when people realize that we appreciate ourselves more and our self-worth, then they too will give, okay, so thank you, thank you everybody for the uh, forecast, and now I'm moving into the yoga chakra health section of this episode okay so you're more than welcome to hang out and uh, to get ready to do some stretches okay I need to put on a uh, excuse me there um, uh, put on some yoga outfit or something for this okay but um, I'm not because <laughs> I can't pause it and, and replay you know record so let's do this this is all about our solar plexus chakra repeat after me Manipura Manipura, okay, is the solar plexus chakra, and um, and the heart chakra is uh, Anahara. And why are we going to take that in consideration? Because Jupiter is there too, and it expands, and it's also dealing with fire, okay, and it has to heat as move up. So just real quickly, wonderful crystals to have around you and to really ignite that if your um, solar plexus chakra is not being stimulated. Okay, and you're feeling unbalanced. First of all, um, before the crystals, how do we know we're unbalanced? Okay, is um, uh, with our solar plexus when we're angry. Okay, um, when we are violent, we're feeling a desperation, caring, thought, uh, thoughtlessness. Okay, um, unfocused. Okay, and those are certain um, characteristics. Uh, being argumentative all the time, feeling that we need to push our own, um, being impatient, okay, when you're driving and you need to go for someone else, you know, I mean, relax, you know, a couple seconds, a couple seconds, but better to be safe than sorry, all right, so at this time, you know, uh, certain things to do to help balance yourself out is we're going to talk about chakra foods, you know, um, the Archangel Michael and Iliad is wonderful angels at this time, Archangels to help and, uh, uh, you know, for energy balance and ask for, and um, they come to us. Also, remember the seraphim angels, too, are wonderful angels of uh, fire that help us stay balanced. So, certain crystals that we can wear to stay balanced at this time is a fool's gold, uh, yellow citron, topaz, you know, all that yellowish, okay, and gold stuff. Watermelon, uh, tourmaline, jade, rose quartz, and turquoise, okay. Uh, if you ever want to make things happen faster, is wearing your um, Moldavite with any of those stones will enhance it and ignite it to go faster. Okay, essential oils and incense that help us to stay balanced during this time for our solar plexus chakra too is rose, bergamot, neroli, lang lang. Okay, Melissa rose, uh, rosemary, frankincense, chamomile, and myrrh. Put it all together and just put it on you know if not come see me I have I do make my oils I do sell them and uh, you know so they're available I a lot of people do like my uh, oils especially uh, Yamaya my Yamaya oils more than welcome I know that was a gratuitous advertising on my part but it is my video <laughs> so okay 
things to be aware of at this time or uh, I mean foods to be eating at this time to help us stay balanced carrots asparagus all right silver beets corn rice figs apples strawberries peaches almonds raisins celery lettuce cauliflower spinach onion mustard radish tomatoes and lemons okay and not to get too be careful not too acidy you don't want you need to eat alkaline meals if not when you eat it too acidy and I do that a lot. That's when you get those little breakouts or upsets in stomach. Okay, alkaline meals. Remember, protein with your uh, complex carbohydrates. Okay, which are going to be your vegetables. Okay, um, or your starchy carbs with your complex uh, carbs. Okay, which is going to be your rice or your beans with vegetables. Remember, putting meat. And putting uh, or chicken, all that with rice is two meals. You need to separate that and add more vegetables, add more rice uh, separate, or the meat. Okay, alkalize your meals better, right? So that way you can digest better and your body can absorb the minerals, not fight against one another. All right, you're causing a chemical reaction. Teach correct and proper eating with your family. This idea the government issued, oh, yeah, the pyramid. You know who uh, pushed that was Monsanto, okay? Why? You notice? You notice the starchy carbs, how much? Well, yeah, I guess what Monsanto does. It's a lot of gluten, huh? Hmm. Didn't, uh, didn't realize that, okay? And uh, the growth hormones in those uh, cows, I mean, look at everybody, you know? Uh, you see pictures of people now and then. You know, it's just horrendous. It's terrible, okay? So of what has happened, you know, and people allowing it because of their ignorance of not educating themselves how to properly balance themselves. So ideas and uh, things to be careful at this time is um, headaches, your brain, eye strain, eyes in general, wear sunglasses or clear ones even in the evening from all the heat, okay? And um, I just saw a bunch of leaves fall from a tree out the window and just look wonderful like yeah it is autumn you know or fall oh sorry <coughs> i wish i could edit that out but oh well this the nice thing about having this logic webcam software is it shows how human i am okay um take a lot of phosphate uh, potassium phosphate you know to help balance out this uh uh, solar plexus chakra because it can affect our cerebral cells, headaches, fever, dizziness, nosebleeds, kidney problems, your loins, or right thymus, gland, buttocks, metabolism, pancreas, spleen, brain, nervous tissues, okay, panic attacks, all right, fallopian tubes, low back, and the veins, all right, yes, veins because it needs oxygen, the blood, you know, going all through that. So, let's talk about some yoga, what we can do to help this, all right? So, we got first, second, open balance, you know, when you're leaning back, okay? And you're lifting that area and balancing it all in that hip area to open everything and just expand it, okay? And just really expand and really breathe into that area. We also have first and second twist, okay? Really, too, because when we're twisting, we are opening and we're opening and making flexible the discs in our bodies in the back and then allowing the digestive area to maneuver itself. It's very important that we eat correctly because it affects our solar, uh, solar plexus because it pushes against the nerve tissues there, all right? And uh, when we're not eating uh, alkalized meals, okay, it's creating stoppage and obstacles, okay? Um, next is downward facing dog. When we're looking downward, okay? Look at, I got Otis. Guys, remember Otis from last, uh, last time? Yeah, he's there. No, he's not going to do downward facing dog, I guess. But, you know, when we're down there and we're stretched, and really, when you're, when you're downward facing dog, okay, you're going to go downward. And it's not just about stretching there, but push and push from your shoulders. You're straight and pushing outward, okay? It's this movement right here, okay? And really, and then expanding it and 
expanding those hips, okay? I know guys are going, uh, I like to watch it. I don't want to do it. It's good. You need to do it. It's good for you, okay? And really expand that and breathe into it. Do the work of all breathing. Good five good deep breaths into it and hold it and then release okay if you could do split that's always good too split is when you're down and down the facing dog and one leg is being split in the other okay so um also the yudhiyana vana the boat okay very also good again it's opening up everything and breathing into it so now are we ready for our meditation? So let's get comfortable. Make sure you've had some water or some tea. I mixed it. Blueberry white with vanilla rewards. Mmm. Okay. My, my cousin and I, we get together. We're like little brewing. they like, what, what should we put together this time? <laughs> you know? I love hanging out and doing that with her. Got our little brewing pots. Okay, so anyway, let's uh, get comfortable. You can lie down. But this meditation, everyone, is looking. We are going to call in our warrior spirit guide, okay? And um, so you could sit, either sit comfortably with your back erect, or lie down. If you can lie down on the floor or something that's a little bit hot, not too soft. Your bed's too soft and so it's not good. You don't want to fall asleep. On the floor is good. Put a yoga mat or a towel down if you're all, you know, picky and, you know, dream phobic or something, you Virgos. <laughs> I'm just teasing the Virgos. No, I'm not. I'm being honest. <laughs> Every joke has some honesty. Okay. Um, you know, and just uh, take off your shoe socks, really, and just wiggle those toes, okay? And make sure you are breathing. Start the Merkaba breathing that we have been talking about all this time. Four, three, two, one, and release. And breathe in again for five. Hold for five. And at that time, feel the oxygen going all the way to your crown chakra, back crawling down your spine and up towards your solar again. And out. Remember, we're breathing into your abdominal region. You can breathe more into it. And feel the oxygen just traveling all the way up to your crown. And just keep breathing in through your nose. Just relax. And any thoughts of today or any other thoughts, just let them go. Just imagine that oxygen just traveling. And you feel a stretch in you, maybe your body, your joints adjusting because of all that wonderful oxygen you're intaking. And breathe in again. Just listen to my voice. I'll try and make it sound so soft for you. And at this time, with your eyes closed, just keep breathing in. And you're going to imagine that your solar plexus is opening up, okay? 
and that you got this kind of like right above your uh, belly button area. You got this wonderful funnel that's slowly opening, opening, and you feel coming down from the heavens this wonderful gold light coming in like a waterfall light just coming in. And at this time, calling your spirit guides, your mother, mother Gaia, Mother Nature, Mother Durga at this time, who is also, you know, the mother warrior, you know, Bangladesh, Nepal, and India. All right. I call in our wonderful divine creator. Of course, we have to call him into this party. Always. Always. Call in the Archangel Michael and Uriel. And let's call in Raphael to help us, uh, Archangel Raphael, to heal us also during this time. Metatron there for any messages they can give us. And call in your own angels. If you have wonderful animal spirit guides, call them in. Say, please join me on this wonderful adventure. You're just surrounded with all this, and they're just giving you, you're being, you know, the feeling this wonderful yellow, goldish light coming in and feeling it all through you. Call in your wonderful ancestor guides, too, especially if any of them are in the military. This would be a good time to call them in. And you know, I'm going to call in the guys from the Civil War that I worked with earlier this year. Thank you. And, you know, if you have a certain culture of certain warriors, call them in, too. You know, so if you're uh, Mexican descent, call in the Mayans, the, the Aztecs, the Toltecs, okay, um, the Olmecs, all those, you know. If you are from a Northern Europe, maybe the Vikings, okay, or the Celts, you know. And if uh, you are from, you know, different tribes in Africa, and, and you know, just the Zulu tribes, you know, if you're the Aborigines from, you know, um, Australia, okay, the Maori tribes, you know, from New Zealand, just call in the warrior ancestors of your descent or that you have an affinity to, to say hello and thank and thank them and offer gratitude for joining you. Keep breathing in, and they're offering you this golden light that's just filling in, and, and you're feeling that, that that chakra, it was almost as if it was, it is the pie pieces that it was cut up, and it's spinning clockwise, and this way, with all that, and it's going and filling you in. And you're going to see those pieces mend as you go from 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock. Feel it all of a sudden, it's together as one piece. Going into 3 o'clock, pulling all that light there. Oh, feel it, feel it going all the way to 4 o'clock. There's no more lights between the 12 and 4 o'clock. And now it's filling up to the 5th. Just feel it there. Now, if you need to wear an eye mask for a distraction, that's fine. And you feel it mending all the way that clock, those piece of pies, all the way. You got half of it done. No lines on one side. And now it's just the left side. Keep 
breathing in that air, wonderful cold light. Thank you for all that's going on. You feel it, Mandy? Nine, no more lines to the eight o'clock. Going to nine. Breathe in deeply. Ten o'clock. To eleven, just feel it all the way. Remember, it helps to focus on your pineal gland, your third eye, with your eyes closed there. If you can, your tongue to the roof of your mouth. Ten, twelve o'clock, and you feel that whole chakra as one complete piece of pie, fresh from the oven. Each pie there. Mm. Anyway, from that pie, let that wonderful golden light extend itself down through the rest of your abdominal region, extending itself sideways, opening up the north, south, east winds of your abdominal region, traveling all the way down through your loin areas, making a connection to Mother Gaia all the way down, okay? Through your thighs, your hips, your thighs. Feel that orange light going downward as you feel it also going from your solar plexus upward. Make sure it's hitting into your liver your stomach, your spleen, your pancreas, into your kidneys, all the way. Let it travel into your adrenals right there. Give it warm, loving light there, spreading upwards, breathing into it, into your lungs, feeling it. And as it's still traveling downward, it's traveling upward, all the way to your heart. And too, if you want to do this meditation with a block underneath you, a yoga block, to really expand those chakras, that would be wise. If your body can uh, do it, know your own limits and boundaries. Remember to breathe out through your mouth. We're doing a Merkabah breathing, everyone. You feel different areas adjusting. Let that golden light travel down to your knees and upward to your shoulders. Yes, remember the gallbladder meridians right behind our neck, that area that holds resentment and anger. Release it, those tight necks is what's going on in your shoulders. Push that oxygen there. Let that golden light hit it and expand. Separate through your shoulders. While it's going upward through your head, it's expanding down your shoulders and your upper arm. Going down your calves. Feel tingling. It's going from the top of your head to the front of your face. Up your throat and up to the front of your face. your toes, your head, feel that golden light just penetrating every single cell, and while you're there, and 
Imagine yourself taking a walk along a field, an open field. You're walking, you're aware of everything around you, of the sun, of the trees that are off in the distance. You're not looking back, you're looking forward. And at this time, Divine Creator, bring along a warrior spirit guide. You see someone coming up to you. Keep walking. They're your warrior spirit guide. Oh my goodness, mine is interesting. Maybe it's a Roman soldier. Maybe it's a Marine. Maybe it's a World War II vet. Maybe it was someone from the tribe of Genghis Khan. Maybe it's from any other different kind of tribe of Viking. Maybe it's a superhero. Keep breathing as you extend your hand or shaking your head. Feel that golden light and their golden light of yours touch you. Don't bend to them, stay standing to them. Produce yourself. Ask them to introduce yourself. See if they tell you your, their name. Look at them. How are they represented? How are they dressed? Look at any armory or weapons they have. Ask them, what can they offer you so that you can be a warrior of the universe? You can be a warrior of the collective consciousness of this universe. A true balanced warrior. What advice do they have to give to you? Ask them. Also ask them what you don't need to fight anymore since we are doing the lunar eclipse. What is it that you've been fighting that you could just let go? Maybe those battles are no longer necessary. Need to focus the attention somewhere else, they tell them. Take a walk with them. Ask them to teach you some techniques. to use the armory and weapons appropriately so they don't harm you or your fellow warriors. Now ask 
them. They have a gift to give you. What is that important information on that you can use in your everyday life? Sorry, you guys. Otis, of course. Oh, I know. Maybe that's good because then, how aware are you? How grounded did you stay? If you didn't stay grounded, then you know you weren't grounded enough. Maybe that was a good test Otis did for us. Ah, now ask your spirit guide not how to <laughs> shut my own. I know that's what you're thinking. But ask your spirit guide what you need to let go of that is no longer necessary in the balance. Keep taking a nice deep breath. And so now show the warrior what they have told you. You know, maybe your warrior spirit guides know those Amazonian women too. You know? Oh, the goddess Diana, remember? They're wonderful warriors also. They're good prophets. Our own masculine. So repeat and show them what you have learned. Now, they're asking you to sit down. You sit down on the field with them. They extend their hands out. Palms up here when you put your palms up with today. And they tell you that the most important thing is to stay focused and that not everything is required a battle or a fight. To choose the battle's love and that fighting is not always creating chaos or crisis, but creating grounded and awareness. Because every time we fight, someone must lose, which is another soul. So stand in the ground instead. Maybe no one has to lose, becoming more expansive. Expansive. That's the collective consciousness. To remember the other great warriors. And as the, your warrior spirit guides telling you this, You see all the wonderful other warriors from all different times, dimensions, and planes arriving. And they come join you and surround you. And they're offering you that wonderful golden light and blessings. And you're just beaming with your light. Feel it all penetrating and you giving off back to them. And slowly they fade off in the background and it's just you and your warrior. He tells you it's time to go. For there are others he must instruct. But that to call on him anytime when you're lacking in confidence, when you're lacking in courage and bravery, or you just want to recap or review, they say their name again. And if you don't hear it, that's okay. You just say, Warrior Spirit Guide. I shake hands. And he reminds you that every adversary Adversary is someone teaching you to be better in you and that they 
deserve to be respected as much as you respect yourself. And he slowly walks away. He's smiling. He's looking at the tools and weapons and armory that they have given you. Look at them in your hands. Know that you are a uniquely brave and courageous soul. Just for being in this lifetime, you have been surviving. And enough of surviving, now you are creating. You're going to use those tools not to survive, but to create your life. Can you use these tools to create and to teach others to create their life? Breathe in, breathe out. And look and, and thank your angels, your animal guides, and the archangels, Michael and Miguel and Raphael. Metatron for the messages and guidance and healing. Thank Mother Gaia, Father Time of all dimensions and planets, and of course, our divine creator, source, divine intelligence, God. Allah. Slowly start wiggling your toes your fingers. If you want, you can go to sleep at this time. Take a nice deep breath, still breathing now. Remember to put those tools in your heart. Keep them there cherished, so whenever you need it, you know where to find them. about you, but my spirit warrior is not what I expected, but I'm thrilled. Share with me, leave me comments who your spirit warrior was. Mine was named Amarak, and um, Amarik, I think, and they kind of remind me dressed from, um, anybody ever seen uh, the musical The Lion King? Yeah, okay, exactly. <coughs> I didn't expect that whatsoever. Um, well, but I'm thrilled. And the tools they gave me was a, um, a spear. And um, it looked like a pendant, a crystal. But a pendant, but a huge one. Reminding me to always be flexible yet grounded like a crystal. And thank you for sharing this with me. It was wonderful. Thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate any donations to uh, uh, Selena Celestial Soul Wellness at gmail.com. PayPal is wonderful. Remember, if you have any questions, you leave me any questions, go ahead and leave me a deposit you know, regarding your astrology chart. And then we'll make a, uh, an appointment. And then I can um, call you back text you back, email you back, Skype you back as you'd like, and we'll continue on. I always appreciate those who appreciate me. You don't go to a mechanic, uh, you say, so-and-so's a mechanic we, at a party, and they'll say, hey, uh, by the way, my car's making this and this, and I'll expect, you know, I always say, come in for a consultation, or let me see, take a look at it, you know. So, um, and that's what I say to you, too, as you know. So thank you so much for your time and your wonderful treasures and for your unique, courageous being, just for being you and being here today, every day. This is La Sirena Nereida, Shasita.
Annotate. 